Hello, hello, and welcome. By watching this video, you're going to be able to determine for yourself if ICT strategies work or if they don't work. Yes, the ever popular ICT trading strategies. Now, the back test that you're seeing on your screen is not from ICT. The back test that you're seeing on your screen is from the order flow delta algorithm, which is included in price action pivoter version three. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you the exact elements that I used in my code to backtest an ICT strategy. Now, I've taken the most popular elements that I've seen in a variety of different YouTube videos uh, that they've discussed, for example, their Fibonacci retracements, the four hour time frame, market structure, liquidity, kill zones, price action, trends, all of that stuff. I've taken it, I've codified it, and I'm going to show you my code in this video, and I'm going to backtest it. And you're going to be able to determine for yourself if ICT works or if it doesn't work. Now, I'm sure you've seen plenty, plenty of videos on YouTube with respect to ICT. Now, the majority of those videos that I've watched essentially have a speaker who is cherry picking the trade by picking a particular date that they want to show on the chart and then applying the ICT strategy to it and essentially saying, see, it works beautifully. Now, that is not a proper way of determining if a strategy works or if it doesn't work. In order for us to determine if ICT works, we have to take all of the elements of an ICT setup, turn it into code, and then back test it for at least six months, which is what I'm going to show you in this video. And then you can make a determination if ICT is indeed investable or if ICT should be avoided and a different strategy should be used altogether. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've put a lot of energy into making it and I believe it's gonna benefit you tremendously. Let's jump right in. To properly test if ICT works or not, I took my price action pivoter code and I added a fourth strategy to it, the ICT strategy, and renamed the entire thing ICT Sandbox. I've made the price action pivoter code very modular as once in a while, I get requests from clients who would like to add their own custom trading strategy to price action pivoter, which already has extensive defensive parameters of risk, trade, and money management conditions built in. As I share the ICT related code for you on the right side of your screen, you'll note the ICT code is mixed into the approximate 6,500 lines of code that price action pivoter has, as there are a lot of moving parts here, which must all work together in perfect harmony, and they do. Let's quickly set up the ICT trade conditions. You can see in the top left corner, this is my ICT sandbox where I test different trading ideas. For the ICT trade execution setup, we have to consider many elements, including market structure, price action, higher time frame, fractal highs and fractal lows, fib retracements, and other conditions. I used code that finds the index of the highest high and lowest low price within the look back period. I use the one hour or 60 minutes to be precise as the trades are being executed on the one minute chart. I then measured and stored the swing high and swing low of the price runs as variables. Moreover, I stored as variables the Fibonacci retracements at 61.8% as well as at 79% for both the long and short side. With respect to the short term price action, for longs I'm looking for two green bars, for shorts the code is looking for two red bars. The final green bars close for the long trades must be higher than the previous high and the final red bars close must be lower than the previous low for potential short trades. Now I have three more criteria for my ICT test. One is to look up the four hour time frame to find both the fractal high and fractal low. Fractal highs and fractal lows are essentially analyzing price action over five bars at a higher time frame like the four hour chart to determine if we are going to get a reversal in price action. I then added code via a slope condition to determine if price is slightly trending higher or slightly trending lower. Finally, according to popular ICT trade setups, we need to have price be between the FIB retracement levels mentioned earlier for both the long and short trade setups. Now, we need to bring it all together. Using a platform such as NinjaTrader, where you can clearly define your rules and then backtest your strategy on minute bars where the calculations are being done upon the close of the minute bar is the proper way of determining if a trading strategy is investable or not. Cherry picking trades on a chart and making a video about that while you take 10 minutes to draw squares and lines on your chart and hone in on one, two, or even 10 trades is nowhere near acceptable levels when one is doing their due diligence to determine if a trading strategy is investable or should be avoided and another strategy should be used instead. One needs at least a few hundred trades to make such a determination. 
Thus, backtesting a strategy and studying those results makes much more sense. Okay, let's begin the back tests. First, let's see what the experts on ICT kill zones say our kill zones should be. As you can see, they have Asian, London, New York, and back to London kill zones for ICT trades. Since the author is noting that I should set it to New York or Eastern time, I need to set it three hours prior to that as I'm in Pacific time. Upon converting the times, there are a total of four start and end times. I'm going to back test the Asian and London kill zones on the Analyzer 6 tab and the New York and London close kill zones on Analyzer 7. Since the London kill zone is beyond midnight, I need to break that up into two separate parameters of 2300 to 2359 hours and midnight, which is denoted by zero, and the 200 hours for the 2 a.m. Pacific time. As you can see, all of the times in this trading system are in military time. Switching over to Analyzer 7 tab, I need to have 400 to 600 hours for the New York kill zone and 700 to 900 hours for the London close kill zone. I don't need the third start and stop times and the go long, go short boxes are unchecked anyway, so nothing will run. But for the sake of further clarity, I'm going to zero out the third start and stop times. Next, I'm going to review all of the parameters. I want to make sure the first three strategies are not checked as I only want to backtest the ICT strategy, which is strategy four. Plus, I want to review all of my defensive parameters, such as money and trade management, profit target and stop, as well as the unrealized profit peak high low trailing stop. Anytime you are using any automated trading system, I strongly recommend you review each and every parameter to ensure it's exactly what you intended and there are no typos. You will note I have one tick of slippage in the back test as one tick is just about right for the SPOOs, also known as the E-mini S&P 500 futures. But before I run the back test, I need to comment out in the code two out of the three key elements as noted by ACT experts, which are the fractal high and fractal low on the four hour chart and the slope. I will back test each of these separately in this video, as I had mentioned earlier, as well as all together, so you can have a complete picture of this extensive back test. As I wait for the NinjaScript code to compile, please note that I'm running the back test for this full year, so January 1st, 2024 until July 15th, 2024. I'm going to run the back tests on Analyzer 6 and 7 concurrently. Moreover, as a refresher, I'm going to back test the three most critical elements of ICT separately and then all together to see if it makes sense to invest in ICT or to find an alternative trading strategy. All right, that's Analyzer 6 and that's Strategy Analyzer 7. Let's see what we find. Remember, we need to add the number of trades and the net profit and the drawdown, etc., to get the full picture of these two ICT strategy backtests. Looks like the Asian and London kill zones got killed as they're down over $14,000 in Analyzer 6. New York and London close fared better with a net profit of almost 3,000, but when you add up the trades together, you get 490 trades. At $5 round trip commission, the ICT strategy not using fractals and slope would be down a little over $14,000 thus far this year. Now let's fire up the NinjaScript code editor again and ensure we update the code so we can backtest the four hour fractal high and fractal low, which is yet another key ICT trading component mentioned by ICT experts. I needed to do that for both the short side and the long side. Please excuse the extra white spaces. I needed to ensure the rest of my code, which is essentially the price action pivoter code that includes the new order flow delta algorithm remains private. I trust you understand the need to do that. It took nine years to get my strategies to this stage, so it wouldn't be fair for me to just give it all away. Now let's go ahead and back test strategy analyzer six and seven tabs so we can see the results of the four hour fractal high and fractal low component of ICT and determine if that works better than the Fibonacci retracements we tested earlier. Remember, we still have to test the slope, which is essentially the trend line, and then we need to backtest all three components together. Finally, we need to test the order flow delta algorithm so we can determine which strategy makes more sense to invest in. And it looks like Analyzer 7, which had New York and London close kill zones, came in at $150 loss, but the Asian and London kill zones in Analyzer 6 did better, and that would have made, in this backtest, nearly $7,600. These back tests are technically less valid than the first set of back tests as we only have a total of 142 trades, 103 trades in Analyzer 6 and 39 trades in Analyzer 7. But it looks like all things being equal, the fractal strategy off the four hour time frame would be up a total of $6,727.50 this year after you subtract $710 for commissions, which I got by multiplying 142 trades by $5. Okay, after ensuring only the slope component of the three major ICT components is active and after a quick review of the parameters, I'm going to backtest analyzer six and seven for the ICT strategy 
and see what we get. As we wait for the back tests to load, let's quickly recap that we still have to back test all three popular ICT components altogether and then compare that to the order flow delta algorithm in Price Action Pivoter. Well, there it is. Analyzer 7, which has the New York and London close ICT kill zone, came in at negative $1,787 while Analyzer 6, which had the Asian and London ICT kill zones, came in at negative $1,087. That means the trend component of ICT came in at a subtotal net loss of $2,875, but then we have to add the commissions of $5 multiplied by a grand total of 611 trades between the two backtests, and the total net loss comes to $5,930. Now, after I uncomment all three ICT components and use all three together in the back tests, I can almost hear some ICT practitioners, some of which are ICT course sellers and ICT mentors, saying the trend line liquidity where I use 10 slope is too short of a time frame. But that is how trend lines are used in ICT, as the higher time frames are not supposed to use trend lines at all. Nonetheless, I'm still happy to visit this conversation further. Simply leave a comment and tell me what precise setup you'd like to see for me to backtest. Be specific and insightful, and I'd be happy to make another video with your suggestions on ICT and see how that backtest performs. I also want to note, though you saw it on the parameters themselves, I had a 3.3 R, which means my profit target is 3.3 times my risk, and I had a peak high-low trailing stop trailing price at 75% away from the unrealized peak profit, and it became active when the unrealized profit hit $650 or more. As we wait for backtest results to load, I think it behooves us to test the best performing component of ICT, which are the 4-hour fractals, to run between 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, as well as the Asian kill zone, as I believe kill zones are not thoroughly backtested by ICT practitioners, at least not on the spoos. And then I'm saving the best for last, the order flow delta algorithm strategy, which I've included in Price Action Pivoter. And there you have it. Analyzer 7, which has New York and London closed kill zones, came in at 2,297. And Analyzer 6, which has the Asian and London ICT kill zones, came in at negative 2,350. So an overall small loss for the year when all three ICT strategy components are used. So totaling analyzer 6 and 7 results, we have a subtotal negative of $63, but then we add the total number of trades, which is 89, multiply that by $5, and we get a total net loss of $508. All right, just to be as fair as possible to ICT traders and practitioners, I'm going to run a backtest with just the 4-hour fractal component over the Asia kill zone, as well as nearly the entire RTH futures trading session of 6.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Pacific, and you'll be able to see a select light improvement in the backtest, although the numbers you see even in the most optimal ICT backtest that I could run is a mere fraction of what the order flow delta algorithm has shown for the same time period using the same money, trade, and risk management parameters, plus the order flow delta algorithm is being set to run during the RTH trading session of 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific which significantly reduces margin requirements versus having to trade during electronic trading hours, such as the Asian kill zone hours. And there it is, $9,550 net profit for this year at 118 trades. So subtract the commissions of $590 and you get a semi-decent net profit of $8,960. And that is happening because we did not use most of the recommended ICT kill zones. Instead, we used nearly the entire regular trading hours and the Asian kill zone of 1700 to 1900 hours. Here we go, the moment you've been waiting for. I'm now going to run a back test on the order flow delta algorithm that I made available in Price Action Pivot version 3. You can see that all of the day, money, trade, and risk management parameters are all the same as the parameters I used for the ICT back tests. As far as time, I use 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. Unlike ICT kill zone hours, some of which are during the electronic trading session where margin requirements are significantly higher, Order flow delta algorithm is set to trade within the regular trading hours, where the margin requirements are significantly less expensive than overnight margin requirements, saving money for traders. Plus, the difference in the back-tested results between the order flow delta algorithm and the ICT strategy is quite significant. As you can see, the subtotal net profit came in at $31,775, but we need to subtract commissions on 159 trades, which comes out to $795. So the total net profit is $30,980. That's nearly three and a half times 
more than the most optimal conditions that I was able to find for ICT. And it has a lower drawdown too. If you'd like to learn more about Price Action Pivoter, please visit PinnacleQuant.com today. You can also request a Zoom demonstration of the entire Price Action Pivoter suite of trading tools, including the Python-based ML Price Mapper, LSTM machine learning forecasting standalone software directly from the Price Action Pivoter page. Until next time, remember to give your time to loved ones and cherish them. Spend as much free time as possible in nature, away from computers, and God bless.